We are in Biopolis, Singapore, in front of Suresh Shizutasan's lab, where he and senior research fellow AJ Maturu have been working on the alarm response in the zebrafish. 70 years ago, Carl von Frisch, while carrying out an experiment on hearing in fish, noticed that when you injured one fish, all the other fish in the same school would flee from that one fish. And he called this a fright response. And he went back to his lab to try to figure out what made the fish frightened. And he f discovered that it was an injury just to the skin that released something that was smelt by other fish in the school that would put them into a state of fear. So he called this the alarm substance or, or Shrek stuff. And we are interested in studying fear. And we realize that the al alarm response in zebrafish is a very robust response to study fear. And in order to identify the neural circuits underlying fear, the first thing we thought would be necessary would be to actually identify the pheromone itself so you could get a clear understanding of the neural circuits that mediate the fear response. First of all, we established a behavioral assay which allows us to look at an individual fish behavior uh, in a quantitative manner. So this, uh, this helped us in progressing to the next step which involved biochemical purifications of various types so we could get fractions and test them in our behavioral assay to see if our fractionation was giving us a higher purity or lower purity of the substance. Uh, from that, uh, we, from the fractions which were the most active, we then went about characterizing them further to end up finding chondroitin, uh, which, which is what we have reported in this study. Uh, this molecule changes the behavior of the fish uh, in terms of its swimming behavior. It causes the fish to uh, display darting, uh, as well as uh, it enhances the fish's uh, freezing and pausing episodes as well. Uh, plus, uh, another parameter which it changes is that the bottom dwelling time. So in case of zebrafish, they spend most of the time in the bottom of the tank if they are fearful. The molecule which has been reported in the literature, we uh, used that in our assays and uh, they, it elicited a weak response. And that's why we embarked upon this journey of trying to find the actual stimulus because uh, to us the major interest is also to look at the neural circuitry for which you would need to have a pure stimulus. Well, to find out where these uh, glycosaminoglycans are acting, what we did was uh, image the brain of the zebrafish. We used transgenic zebrafish to express a calcium sensitive indicator throughout the brain. We did uh, time lapse microscopy. Basically, what would happen is you put the fish under a microscope and it's sitting there in a stream of water, and once in a while you'll introduce an odorant. And while the odorant is introduced, you'd monitor the fluorescent changes in the brain. And wherever there is neural activity, there'll be an increase in fluorescence. And by monitoring the, the whole brain over time, you can see which parts are activated by different odorants. And then we found that uh, when the fish smell this glycosaminoglycan or pure skin extract, they, there is a locus of activity in the dorsal olfactory bulb. So there seems to be a very specific set of neurons that project to this re region of the bulb and also a very set, specific set of neurons that project out from this region of the bulb. The, the major conclusions from our study is basically that um, Shrek stuff, which was thought to be a single molecule, is actually not a single molecule. It is a mixture which may contain at least two or maybe more number of components. Chondroitin, um, as the name suggests, it's a glycan, okay, and this is a, this is a new category of odorants for fish. And the third uh, conclusion you can draw is that chondroitin activates uh, the medial dorsal region of the olfactory bulb, suggesting that there might be a specialized circuit which is uh, involved in detecting fear, or detecting disodorants which causes fear in, in fish. Consequence or significance of the result is we now have some understanding of the evolution of the uh, alarm response. Uh, we know that, uh, that uh, the alarm substance is probably given out passively as a result of injury. You just break down these sugar fragments as a result of injury. There's nothing special there. What is important is the ability to detect it. So selection pressure would have really been at the level of the receiver.